configuring authorization policy. Okay, we configured, we have configured pre-authorization policy, authentication, and now it's time for authorization. What authorization is that after login, what user is allowed to access? For example, the test user that we have, suppose it's a contra, he's a contractor, and he had let's say antivirus running on her on his computer and pre authentication policy have verified it that's fine login page has been displayed he provided the right username and password that's why he get authenticated but now once he logged in by default he's like sitting on my network because he has tunneled into my network and he can try to access almost everything which is available on the network and we don't want that. So authorization policies allows us to provide, let's say, to restrict users that what they are allowed to access after they get successfully authenticated. So in, in our case, test user is a contractor and once he will log in, I want him to access certain IP addresses. Let's say website one and website two. I don't want him to access website 3 and something and anything else on the network. So that's what we will achieve through authorization policy. So for that, I am back on Netscale. We go to global settings, change global settings. Just to verify that under security, the default authorization action is denied. Once we check that, now it's time to create a policy. We go to authorization, and and I will say, let's say contractor policy. The name of the policy is contractor policy. Action will be allowed, and what I would like to allow, we can say request HTTP or let's say request IP and source IP no, destination IP what he is allowed to access is equal to or not equal to I would say equal to 10, 10, 10, 101, and this is a single server, so I would say 255255255. And again, IP, source IP equal to, sorry, destination IP equal to 10, 10, 10, 102. 255, 255, 255, 255. So user, in this as per contractor policy, he is allowed to access these two IP addresses, 10, 10, 10, 101, and 10, 10, 10, 102. Say create. So now the authorization policy has been created. Now the next thing we should do, we should associate or bind this authorization policy to user account. So I go to user account of test local, edit, and authorization policies, and I select contractor policy, OK, and bind, and it's bind to user. So test local, now I have a policy. Now let's see. Now let's now we have verified the global settings is denied. We have created a contractor policy, contractor authorization policy that they are allowed to access two particular IP addresses, and then we we bind that authorization policy to one of the contractors user. Now it's time to test through VPN. Okay, I'm on the client computer. 
I open the browser and go to vpn.itsense.com. Oh, before that, I would like to do one thing. Sorry. Let me just print um, the options and delete the browser history and all. So I'll go to simplevpn.idsense.com and if you remember we created redirections so it will redirect to me to https vpn.idsense.com. Yep, and now Netscaler pre-authorization policy, sorry, endpoint analysis, which is a part of pre-authorization policy. We'll check my system to make sure that Windows Defender is running, which is running in my case. So I should be getting dialog box, login dialog, bo dialog box very soon. And here we go. So I will log in as test local and password login. I logged in successfully. So pre authentication pass, authentication pass, and now it's time to test authorization policy. So I'm selecting plugin. That's clear gateway plugin started. And connection established. Good. So as the connection is established, let me try to access 101. Yeah. All good. How about website 102? Yes. How about 103? And 103 will time out. And the reason is user is not allowed. This test user is not allowed to access 103. Remember in the authorization policy we define that let me just show you real quick again that is allowed to access only 10 10 10 101 and 10 10 10 102 and that's what's happening so that's how authorization policies works guys authorized purpose of authorization policies is to restrict access of authenticated users to make sure that you allow them only what they need rather than allow them to you know scroll through or browse through the entire network. Pre-authorization pre policy is very good to check for client computer health because once the tunnel in that computer is on your network. So pre-authorization policies are very important to make sure that the client computer is free from viruses, it has all security softwares installed. Authentication, of course, is equally important to make sure that the valid username and password known to the person who is trying to log into. And third is authorization. That will decide what he or she is allowed to access. So this is so this is it, guys. Uh, that this was the test of authorization policy and we have successfully done it. Thank you.